Here is Top Accolade Africa News Roundup. I am Abiodun Mohamed. The US government on Monday imposed sanctions on 14 men, including six. It said were part of a network that has engaged in weapons procurement, financial facilitation, and recruitment for the Al Shabaab Islamist militant group. The Treasury named the six as Abdullah Jerry, Khalif Adali, Hazan Afgoye, Abdi Karim Usin Gagali, Abdi Samad, and Abdi Rahman Nouri. All were designated under Executive Order 13224, which targets terrorist groups and their supporters. It also sanctioned three men, Mohamed Hussein Salad, Ahmed Azan Ali Suleiman Matan, and Mohamed Ali Badas under the same executive order, accusing them of being part of an Al-Shabaab smuggling and weapons trafficking network in Yemen. Sudan's main political coalition on Monday presented its vision for a fully civilian-led authority to lead a transition to elections following stepped-up efforts to end an 11-month-old stalemate between the ruling military and pro-democracy forces. A 2021 military coup ended a power-sharing partnership between the armed forces and the forces of freedom and change FFFC coalition, derailed a transition to democratic elections and plunged the country into political and economic turmoil. Nearing the anniversary of the takeover, the military has not yet succeeded in naming a prime minister. However, the summer military leaders said they intended to exit politics. FFFC leaders said they had been informed the military had accepted a draft constitution circulated by the Sudanese Bar Association that would allow for civilian rule. Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni has said his son, General Mubozi Kenerugaba, will no longer comment on government affairs on Twitter. It follows a social media storm a fortnight ago when General Kenerugaba, aged 48, tweeted about invading neighboring Kenya and conquering its capital, Nairobi, in two weeks. President Museveni later asked Kenyans for forgiveness over the tweet. He stressed his son will leave Twitter by claiming the social media platform is not a problem. Museveni added that talking about other countries and partisan politics of Uganda is something his son, in quote, should not do and he will not do it. The veteran leader said his son was free to tweet about sports or topics that are not controversial. The Nigerian anti-drug agency has apologized to a man in the central state of Plateau after its operatives raided his home by mistake as they targeted a suspected drug dealer. Armed operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency NDLEA arrested Ali Yasao Idris after breaking into his home in a pre dawn raid on Thursday, but the operation turned out to be directed at the wrong target. Idris, aged 42, said he initially thought his house was being attacked by kidnappers because kidnappings for ransom are rampant in the country. He then hid inside the ceiling but was pulled out by the officers who broke into the ceiling, he said. The incident happened in the town of Yelwan Shendam. Ghanaian authorities will block about 10 million SIM cards by the end of this month as the registration window draws to a close. The Communications Authority and Industry Regulator will on 31st October disconnect data and voice services of unverified cards after a year of nationwide registration campaign. In July, the Communication Authority extended the deadline for verification by two months to allow Ghanaians and non-citizens residents in Ghana to link their identity cards to their SIM cards and complete the registration process. By 4th October, about 90 million SIM cards were fully registered, representing about 45% of all the cards issued. SIM card owners must link their Ghana national cards to their SIM and then proceed for full registration and biometrics capture with their service providers. The government says the aim of the SIM registration exercise is to protect users against fraud and ensure digital security. That is the size of Top Accolade African News Roundup. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen.